Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am I am the girl who travels and I am still currently here in Japan. So and if you haven't watched any of my previous vlogs, I made a Japan playlist. So please go to the playlist section of this channel and you will see the Life in Japan or Japan Diaries playlist where I uploaded all of the vlogs I made here in Japan. Okay, so today I actually posted on my Facebook page asking if they have any questions or if you have any questions about traveling here in Japan since people have not been able to travel to Japan for the past two years because of the pandemic and as of now, I still haven't seen any tourists while I was here. But before we go, please make sure that you subscribe, click that subscribe button so that you'll be updated for all the travel tips, budget hacks, and travel guides I'll be making in the future. Okay, so without further ado, let's answer some of the questions I received before we go to the travel tips that I made. So someone asked me if, do you need a second booster shot? As of the moment and when I went here, I didn't have to get a second booster shot. So it's just right in the timing that I have not gotten any booster shots that time. And I only had to search where I could get Pfizer or Moderna booster shot because those two brands are what they require so that you won't have to quarantine. They also have a set of brands of vaccines they require for you. So you can see that in the Japan Embassy website, but I had two AstraZeneca shots and one Pfizer booster shot. So his next question is, do you need to quarantine? Just like I said, if you have the required brands of vaccine, you don't have to quarantine. I didn't quarantine, but arriving here, I was able to go to my sister's home right away and go around Yokohama the next day or travel anywhere I wanted. So if you didn't have or if you got other brands of vaccine that they do not acknowledge, you may have to go on quarantine for three or seven days. It depends. He also asked about hotel rates and to be honest, I haven't stayed at a hotel here in Japan because first time we went here, I stayed at my aunt's house in Osaka and now I am staying at my sister's house in Yokohama. But upon checking Agoda, I was surprised to see that there are hotels as low as 2,500 pesos to 3,000 pesos a night in Shibuya or Tokyo. But those are just simple ones and small ones, just enough for you to sleep. There are more expensive ones, of course, that's like 6,000 or 10,000 pesos or more a night. It depends on what kind of accommodation you're looking for. Okay, so let's go now to the travel tips. I actually have a list here on my laptop. Um, someone asked me for solo travel tips, but these tips I listed are for general because I actually traveled alone a lot. So yeah. Number one, I actually didn't list this, but it's very, very important to bring your passport everywhere you go. At first, I didn't believe when they told me that police here in Japan do random check. Like, they will stop you while you're walking, even if you're just out to buy snacks or cola at the convenience store. They'll stop you and check for your passport to check or to see your residence card, your alien card or what kind of visa you have to be sure that you're not staying illegally here so my friend told me she had the experience and my sister also told me she had the experience as well one more thing why you have to bring your passport everywhere is for tax-free shopping or for tax exemption so for uniqlo h&m and other stores they only require you to purchase more than 5,000 yen and you won't have to pay the tax anymore so for other more expensive stuff like shoes i think they require around 10,000 yen purchase before you get exempted and they have to scan your visa so that's why you have to bring your passport all the time the tax-free shopping is not available everywhere it's not that available here in yokohama but in tokyo it's more available because that's where the foreigners and tourists usually go so okay here's where my list starts purchase your transport card this is an example of their transport card okay i don't know if you can see but there's my name the girl who travels um, my sister bought this for us the first time we went here four years ago focus okay so this is valid for me. 
that card is valid for five years so I can use it until next year April so you can use that for the bus for the train you can use it in the in the convenience store I've used it a lot in the convenience store and when you buy drinks from the vending machines you can also just tap that they have three types they have the IC card the Icoca the Pasmo and the Suica so why do you have to buy the transport card because if you don't buy that you'll have to buy the paper ticket and for you to be able to buy that you have to compute where you're coming from what station you're coming from and what station you're be, you'll be going to and you'll have to calculate how much is the fare and that's what you have to insert in the ticket machine and that takes a lot of time that's what we did the first time we went here in Japan so to save money or to save time just purchase your transport card transport fares um, for example from this house to the nearest train station it is 220 yen which is about 100 pesos in the Philippines and that's quite expensive it's just like taking a 15 minute jeepney ride and it's 100 pesos so from here Yokohama from my sister's house to Shibuya it takes an hour and it's 1,000 yen per way so I have to spend 2,000 yen every time I go to Shibuya and I went to Shibuya a lot of times so it's like 800 or 900 pesos just for your fare it's a little bit expensive for me okay number three I was intimidated at first to commute by myself going to Tokyo that's why I didn't plan going anywhere because I thought I won't be able to but I had a day to practice like I was supposed to go to the Stranger Things cafe in Shibuya but I couldn't go in because I needed reservation but that became my practice that was the first time I went to Tokyo alone and then I felt more comfortable going to places I, I, I went to Roppongi I went to Odaiba by myself or I met a friend there so you just have to practice it's okay to get lost at least once and yeah I, I still got lost and got off the wrong station many times but that will make you braver and you'll be able to go to more places next time remember the last schedule of the train or bus going to your house because if you're like me who live far away and I was not able to get on the last train going home i'll have to wait for the next day to come which is around 6 a.m the first trip of the train to go home because taking a cab will be more expensive than my plane ticket from the philippines to japan so yeah cabs taxis are so expensive here in japan number four i did not have to withdraw cash even once while i was here um, I only had 20,000 yen pocket money going here and then the rest I was able to use my debit card. I'm gonna show you Ta -da! This is the debit card I use. It's from Union Bank Lazada pa yung kinuha ko para I get points. I'm not in any way sponsored or affiliated by Union Bank but I was so happy that I was able to use it everywhere here in Japan I was able to eat at restaurants, go to coffee shops, buy souvenirs, grocery, and on Amazon. I was able to use that card. And it's not even a credit card, it's just a debit card. All I had to do was to inform them via Twitter that I'll be traveling to Japan for a while. I told them my travel schedule or my the duration of my trip here in Japan so they won't flag the transaction as a fraud transaction. So if you have a credit card or a debit card, I think it'll be easier, more convenient to go around here in Japan. Number five, you have to study the rates before you go. When I went here in Japan, the yen was so weak. Um, so everything was cheaper than it's supposed to be. And some transactions, for example, I went to the ABC Mart and bought two Air Force shoes and they asked me if I want the transaction to be in yen or in peso and I always chose peso because it's a lot cheaper um, one easy example is I went to Ikenari steak and the steak was 2,000 yen if you convert it it's supposed to be like 900 pesos but I the the money deducted on my card was only 600 pesos so I was able to save 300 pesos because of the rate difference 
and I don't know if this card is really good. Now, the rates are going back to normal. They're becoming expensive again, so I should go home. It's not good for me. Good for the OFWs, but not good for me. Number six is to observe people. While you're on the bus or on the train, why are they not sitting on that vacant seat? Why are they standing? Maybe the seat is for elderlies or for pregnant women and they prioritize them a lot. And make sure to avoid talking on the phone while you're in the bus and train. And please use your phones if you're gonna listen to music, watch videos, or play games. So they really prefer quietness everywhere. Number seven is that you'll get the stairs and it's not just you, it's everyone, every foreigner living in Japan for years now, they still get the stairs because you have different hair color, different skin color, you look different, so we get the stairs. What can we do? They're still not used to foreigners living in Japan. Number eight is about, number eight is about tattoos. So I got a tattoo before I went to Japan and in the old times only yakuza's or gangsters in Japan had tattoos so they felt uncomfortable or they still feel uncomfortable seeing tattoos but not everyone everyone's already adjusted to the new times but of course for the older people it's not a good sight and some bathhouses and beaches will require you to cover them up before you can swim or some places they will not allow you to go in the water if you have tattoos number nine if you're planning to go cafe hopping that's one of the letdown i felt while i was here because i love coffee shops a lot but they practice minimalism a lot here in japan so some coffee shops they are so beautiful but they don't have seats available or they'll just have two blocks of chairs outside the store where you can drink your coffee so it's because they're not into dining in or staying at one place for a very long time. They're busy people and they're not heavy on social media. So, yeah. Well, you still have those big id, aesthetic coffee shops you can find in Shinjuku, Harajuku, Shibuya. So just do your research. Number 10, SIM card. I bought mine from Klook. I am actually an affiliate of Klook, but it's been a long time. So I'm gonna look for the for the affiliate link I have and put it down below if you'll need one. So I bought one that's valid for 30 days for 2,500 pesos and it has unlimited data. But if you're like me who'll be staying indoors most of the time, you won't really need unlimited data. So my sister bought uh, a new sim card for me the ne the following month and it's just for 900 pesos with 10 gig and as of now i've only used three gigs because i only use it for maps when i go out or a little bit of facebook and youtube so yeah number 11 is to dress according to the season so summer here is very very hot so you cannot really endure that leather jacket or the parisian hat so dress comfortably, especially wear comfortable shoes because you'll do a lot of walking here. But I'll, I'm telling you, Japanese people are so fashionable, especially in Tokyo, and they don't really care about what you wear. So you'll feel more comfortable to wear what you want. In the Philippines, I won't be able to go to the mall just wearing this shirt, uh, uh, loose pants and sandals, but here they don't really care. So you can. 12, I always, always include this in my travel tips don't shop all your OOTDs in the Philippines don't fill your luggage with clothes leave some space so you can go shopping here in Tokyo and buy Japanese clothes so the prices are not that different if you shop at the malls in the Philippines but if you shop on Shopee like 200 pesos or 300 pesos then go for it Number 13 is to learn a few phrases or words. Before going here, I didn't really practice, but I know some words, but I was not comfortable of even saying arigato gozaimasu or konnichiwa. Now I'm more comfortable because those are the only phrases I know. And I'm still uncomfortable dining in restaurants because I think it's so complicated to order by myself. Um, number 14 is to Google Translate everything you don't understand. I'll be showing maybe a screen recording here of how I do Google Translate using photos. That's a trend, like that's how people do it these days and that's very very helpful. 
Number 15, reserve everything as much as you can. So walk-ins are not a thing nowadays. I couldn't go to Disneyland because I was not able to reserve a ticket beforehand. And I wasn't able to go to Stranger Things Cafe or Harry Potter Cafe because they all require reservations. Maybe because of the pandemic, of course. So 16, luxury brands are a bit cheaper here than in the Philippines. In the Philippines, whenever influencers will be showing off their lore, Laura Mercy or their Chanel or other brands, I won't e even dare look at the price because I know it's too expensive. But here, they're commonly available at the mall and I was able to look at the brands and mm, it's a bit affordable. Like, you can afford it. But I'm not just that person who'll spend that much on a lipstick. Maybe or maybe not. 17 services like haircut, hair colors, or doing manicure, pedicure is expensive here in Japan because Japanese people are expensive. And yeah, when I went here, I had long hair and it's too hot. My sister had to treat me for a haircut and that costs like, a haircut costs 1,000 pesos, I think. And that's only 50 pesos in the Philippines. But I couldn't endure it, so I had a haircut. But even if my roots grew out in the past vlogs, you will see that I did not dare to get hair color at the salon. I just bought my own and applied it by myself because I know that would be too expensive at the salon. Okay, so I think that covers everything I want to share, the travel tips I want to share with you anything else so if i missed anything please comment down below and if you have questions about visa it's a little bit long and complicated to answer so i'll have to make another vlog for that so that's it i hope this has been helpful and if it's been helpful please make sure you subscribe or like this video okay bye